Let's go to the horseshoe where Iowa on the road at number three, Ohio State. The Buckeyes are 21 point favorites as of recording, uh, 2 30 p.m. on CBS. Guys, I think I'm going to take Iowa in this plus the 21. I don't know that I can draw you a map that I can show my work on how I'm going to get there, but it's the Iowa defense time and time again. Whenever I think I'm betting against them, it typically isn't very financially viable. I think if Caleb Johnson can give Iowa enough spark offensively, maybe get the Buckeye defenders out of the box and Cade McNamara can throw for, I don't know, 75 yards. That would shouldn't be that hard, right? Maybe Iowa can drag this into a, a two-score game. They hang around with Ohio State late. I haven't exactly been super impressed with Will Howard from the little bit that we've seen. He's certainly done the job, but this will be the toughest defense that he's played by leaps and bounds this season. Might be the toughest he plays all season. Sure. Um it has been lucrative to pick against Iowa when they played this caliber of team. I will say that historically. I went back, I saw your note, and I went back and looked, and I don't have an exact stat, but typically you can count on Iowa to ugly up a game, not really counting on them to do that against a team the caliber of Ohio State. Now, it will be the best team Ohio State has played to this point, so there is some kind of uh, advantage there for Iowa when looking for a cover and Will Howard, I don't think ever saw a defense of this caliber in the Big 12 either. So it's going to be a step up in competition to him to be sure. But I'm going to take Ohio State minus 21. They're at home. I think I was going to be just a little bit too one-dimensional. Quality defensive coordinator like Jim Knowles is going to feast on that and create a lot of short fields for that offense in my mind. So even if Will Howard's not firing on all cylinders, Jeremiah Smith and the rest of those offensive skill players I think they can score enough points to cover the spread, maybe on some short fields, but probably a slow burn, probably like 14, three sleepy score at half. We're all checking our phones, maybe flipping over to this one and seeing Iowa uh, have it close at halftime. And then it ends up being something like 38 to 10, 38 to six. But yeah, I think the path is maybe more Ohio state, not firing on all cylinders or maybe looking ahead to Oregon next week. I think that's the path to cover for Iowa. A turnover or two. That would be huge. Sure. Yeah, Trey, I'm glad you brought up the defense. I think a lot of it is going to be made about, you know, Will Howard and these guys going against the Iowa defense. But this Ohio State defense, I think, is ready to clamp down. I've been really impressed so far, obviously, with what they've been able to do. And they're ready to kind of clamp down on an offense that is resurgent, kind of, under Iowa, right? It's it's better than it was last year. It's not historically terrible. But I still don't think they're at that point with their offense. I don't think they have the personnel where they can really, you know, push this and, and keep up with a team like Ohio State, especially when they have that good of a defense. You combine that with the fact that Will Howard's been really smart, really efficient with the football. Um, You know, we normally say that when you have quarterbacks putting up small stat numbers, it's not really the case for Will Howard. He hasn't been necessarily explosive and dynamic. He did throw for 400 against Western Michigan, but hasn't thrown for 300 yards yet, uh, which I guess for an Ohio State quarterback, we typically expect a little bit more. But I also want to highlight those running backs, Quinshawn Judkins, Travion Henderson, both averaging more than eight yards per carry on the season. I really like what they bring into this game. I think they're going to be able to kind of roll. And, you know, Trey, you were talking about kind of that 38 to 10 range. I think they could probably cover this at, you know, 28 or, you know, even 31, you know, something like that. I, I don't think that I was going to be able to score very much on the ground. I don't think they're going to be able to sustain any drives. They'll probably get some opportunities. They might hit a couple big plays. I, I just don't think they're going to be able to do it all day against Ohio State. Do you want to shout out Joe, uh, resident Buckeye, because we are finally yeah. talking about your team. Uh, you're welcome. But yeah. you're actually finally playing somebody. That, that's very, very yeah, Sorry for not covering Akron and Marshall. <laughs> so the this game, I think, comes down to what can Caleb Johnson do for Iowa. Currently, he's second in the country in total yards rushing, 685 behind only Ashton Jaunty of Boise State. He's averaging 8.35 uh, a tote, which is pretty sick, uh, 171 yards on average per game. Now, that's Ain't probably not going to stand up in this one because Ohio State's third in rushing defense. They're giving up 1.84 yards an attempt. Again, Michigan State, Akron, I, I get it. Uh, still really, really impressive. We'll talk about another really impressive defensive front in Ole Miss coming up here in just a little bit. I'm also curious to see as a litmus test, how does Will Howard handle pressure? 
How is he equipped to throw the ball against this secondary with Trey, as you mentioned, Oregon on deck? A lot of things to take away from this game as teams continue to build their case to be, you know, the upper echelon uh, as we head towards the second half of the season. Gracious, how about that? 